Have you ever wondered about the nature of God? I know I have. I search for a faith that emphasizes a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Oneness, Pentecostalism offers a unique and compelling perspective on Christianity that I found deeply fulfilling. This belief system centers on the oneness of God, emphasizing Jesus Christ as the singular manifestation of the divine. In this essay, I will delve into the core beliefs of oneness Pentecostalism, exploring its biblical foundation and highlighting its relevance in today's world. Oneness Pentecostalism is not merely a theological concept. It is a vibrant faith that transforms lives, including my own. It's about experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit and living in the fullness of God's love. Join me as we embark on a journey to discover the heart of Oneness Pentecostalism. This image captures the essence of Oneness Pentecostalism, a faith that transcends cultural and ethnic boundaries, uniting people in their devotion to Jesus Christ. The radiant light symbolizes the presence of the Holy Spirit, a central element of Oneness belief. At the heart of oneness, Pentecostalism, lies my fundamental belief in the absolute oneness of God. This belief isn't a novel concept for me. It's deeply rooted in the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 proclaims, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This verse, known as the Shema, forms the cornerstone of both Jewish and oneness faith. As a oneness Pentecostal, I interpret this verse literally affirming that there is only one God, not three distinct persons in one being. I believe that God has revealed himself in various ways throughout history, but his essence remains singular and indivisible. This understanding shapes my entire worldview, influencing my worship practices and relationship with God. This image emphasizes the scriptural basis for my belief in one God. The illuminated verse from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 highlights the central importance of this declaration in understanding the nature of God. As a oneness Pentecostal, I firmly believe that Jesus Christ is the embodiment of the one true God. I acknowledge Jesus as both fully God and fully man, rejecting the notion of a separate divine person alongside the Father and the Holy Spirit. This belief stems from my understanding of Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 which states, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For me Jesus is not merely a manifestation of God, but the very essence of God revealed in human form. I find further support for this belief in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, which prophesies the coming Messiah as mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These verses, among others, solidify my conviction that Jesus is the one and only God, worthy of all worship and adoration. This image portrays Jesus as the central figure of my faith. The outstretched arms symbolize his embrace of all humanity, while the radiant light represents his divinity and glory. My view of God as a oneness Pentecostal directly contrasts with the traditional doctrine of the Trinity. While Trinitarians believe in one God existing in three co-equal persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I maintain that these are not separate entities but rather different expressions or manifestations of the one God. This distinction is not merely semantic, it has profound implications for how I understand salvation, baptism and the nature of God's relationship with humanity. I believe that the Trinity doctrine, while widely accepted in Christianity, is not explicitly supported by Scripture and can lead to confusion about the true nature of God. This image visually represents my perspective on the nature of God. It contrasts with the traditional Trinitarian view by emphasizing the unity and singularity of God rather than depicting three distinct persons. Section 5, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a defining moment. I believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a distinct experience that follows salvation. This experience is often accompanied by speaking in tongues as described in Acts chapter 2 verse 4 when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I see this event as a second work of grace empowering us to live a more Spirit-filled life. Speaking in tongues in this context is seen as an initial physical evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit and a powerful tool for spiritual growth and communication with God. This image depicts the biblical account of the day of Pentecost, a pivotal event in the history of Christianity. It visually represents the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, empowering them to spread the gospel message. 
Section 6, Miracles and the Holy Spirit, Evidence of God's Power. I believe that the miracles described in the Bible are not just historical events, but are relevant and available to us today. I attribute these miracles to the power of the Holy Spirit working through individuals. From healing the sick to casting out demons, I see these supernatural occurrences as evidence of God's active presence in the world. My belief in the miraculous is not based on blind faith, but on the promises found in Scripture, Jesus himself said in Mark chapter 16, verses 17 to 18, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I take these words to heart, actively seeking and expecting God to manifest his power in my life and community. This image represents the power of prayer and my belief in divine healing. The clasped hands symbolize my surrender to God's will and my seeking his intervention in times of need. Section 7. The power of speaking in tongues, a gift for today. Speaking in tongues, also known as glossolalia, is a distinctive feature of our oneness Pentecostal worship. While some Christian denominations view this practice as outdated or unnecessary, I consider it a vital gift of the Holy Spirit available to all believers. I often point to passages like 1 Corinthians chapter 14, where Paul encourages us to desire spiritual gifts, especially prophecy and speaking in tongues. I differentiate between speaking in tongues for personal edification and speaking in tongues as a public message requiring interpretation. I believe that speaking in tongues edifies us spiritually and allows for a deeper connection with God. When practiced in a public setting, I emphasize the importance of order and interpretation as outlined by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 27 to 28. This image portrays the intimacy and personal nature of speaking in tongues as a form of prayer and communication with God. It emphasizes our individual connection with the divine. Section 8, Living the Oneness Life, a Personal Transformation. For me, Oneness Pentecostalism isn't just about theological beliefs, it's about experiencing a transformed life through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I am encouraged to live a holy and sanctified life reflecting the teachings of Jesus in my daily conduct. This means demonstrating love, compassion, forgiveness, and integrity in all aspects of my life. In my church, we often emphasize practical holiness, encouraging each other to abstain from behaviors deemed contrary to scripture, such as premarital sex, substance abuse, and involvement in occult practices. I believe that true faith manifests in outward actions and a commitment to living a life pleasing to God. This image illustrates how I apply my oneness faith through acts of service and love. It shows how I put my beliefs into action by reaching out to those in need. Section 9, Finding a Oneness Church, Joining the Community. If you're interested in exploring oneness, Pentecostalism further, finding a local church is often the next step. Oneness churches provide a supportive community where you can learn more about the faith, experience the power of the Holy Spirit and grow in your relationship with God. These churches typically offer vibrant worship services characterized by passionate singing, heartfelt prayers and expository preaching centered on the Bible. When you visit a oneness church, you can expect a warm and welcoming atmosphere. People from all walks of life come together, united by their shared belief in the oneness of God and the transformative power of Jesus Christ. This image symbolizes the open and inclusive nature of oneness churches. The open doors represent the church's willingness to receive all who seek God and desire to learn more about oneness Pentecostalism. Section 10. Conclusion, Embracing the Oneness Truth. I find oneness Pentecostalism to offer a distinct and compelling perspective on Christianity, emphasizing the absolute oneness of God and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This belief system, grounded in Scripture, has helped me emphasize a personal relationship with God and experience the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. From the baptism of the Holy Spirit to witnessing the reality of miracles, I embrace a faith that is both ancient and relevant for today's world. 
If you are seeking a deeper understanding of God and a more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, I encourage you to explore oneness Pentecostalism further. Visit a local oneness church, delve into the scriptures, and open your heart to the possibility of experiencing the fullness of God's love and power in your life.